This video is brought to you by Graded Blue Render Farm. To start off the scene, the first thing I made was the temple. I modelled it based on a few references I got from Google and assembled into a collage in PowerPoint. Some of the details were a bit fiddly, but the only complicated bit was the roof. I made heavy use of the shrink wrap modifier to model the roof sections. I started off by creating a plane in the place that I wanted the roof to be, then shrink wrapped it onto a UV sphere in order to get the curvature looking right. Once I was satisfied that I'd got the lines right, I applied the modifier and then extruded the plane downwards to create the basic roof. To make the ribbing on top of and underneath the roof, I used an array modifier to duplicate a rectangle and then I shrink wrapped the rectangles on top of the roof. In order to do things a bit more procedurally, I split the top and bottom vertexes into two separate vertex groups and then by using two shrink wrap modifiers, each one being confined just to one of the vertex groups, I was able to dynamically control the thickness of the ribbing by adjusting the offset values on the shrink wrap modifier that was limited to the top vertex group. Then I applied the array modifier so I could clean up the ribbing a little bit, especially where it was distorted near the edges of the roof. I also deleted some of the faces to make the rectangles the correct length when the width of the roof changed. All the rest of the details were modeled by eye. Where possible, I used the mirror modifier to duplicate as many features as possible to save some time, and all the texturing was done in Substance Painter. The ground is a plane that I subdivided and then shaped into a hill. A bit of proportional editing allowed me to add some large details to the ground, and then using a displace modifier with a cloud texture, I added in some subtle variations into the landscape. I cut some holes in the landscape for the temple and the gravel path. The grass is from Grassworld. It's a paid add-on, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth the money considering the variation of grass types and detail of the grass models. I ended up using perennial rye grass, autumn hawkbit flowers, orchard grass, and common daisies. I used some weight painting on the ground plane to position a greater quantity of grass closer to the camera where it would be easier to notice. The tree system, in other words, the viewport performance destroyer, was created with a particle system. I did create a separate plane rather than adding them to the ground plane as that made it easier to position the trees with a separate round of weight painting. The particle system is set to hair, which I find works better when you're using a particle system just to randomly disperse objects. I could probably have got away with using fewer trees, but I like how dense the forest looks. The trees themselves are a random assortment of free assets I've downloaded from the internet. Some of them came with materials and others I had to fix or create in Substance Painter. The riverbank is a plane with a mud texture from Substance. After spending a while adjusting it, I was able to get it to blend reasonably well with the grass. The wooden support sections are just cylinders and rectangles that I distorted with a displace modifier and I used a mixture of cloud noise and Veroni textures. The river was made using a combination of a glass and a transparent shader. The glass shader has an IQR of 1.33, which is the same as water, and that simulates fairly accurate reflections. A more complicated way of doing this would have been to use a fluid simulation and then by actually modeling the riverbed. That would probably have looked a bit better, as well as it would have produced a more realistic animation, but it would have added a lot of extra time to the project, so I stuck with using a simple flat plane. Finally, to finish off the background, I added an HDRI. The HDRI came from HDRI Haven, which is a great place to find free high resolution HDRIs. A texture coordinate and mapping node allowed me to rotate the HDRI to find its best angle. The Sakura tree was created using Blender's built-in sapling tree add-on. I used the Japanese maple preset and played around with the settings to get something I liked. 
In order to be able to texture the tree in substance, I did have to convert the tree to a mesh and apply the skin modifier. The leaves were made from textures that I found on Google Images. Using the images as planes add-on, a few loop cuts and proportional editing, I created some basic leaf models. The mesh can be a bit bigger than the texture, as long as the texture has a transparent background, but for the most photorealistic results, try and get the mesh to line up with the texture as close as possible. I could have added the leaves to the tree at this point, however to make the tree look more realistic, I duplicated a small section of the tree to use as a branch, and then I added leaves to that section. Then, with a particle system set to the hair type, I added the branches to the tree, and doing this with this particle branch system created a more fuller and more natural looking tree. I tried a few methods to create the falling leaf, but in the end I settled on a cloth simulation with a wind force. I set the cache start frame to be the frame that I wanted the leaf to fall and then I reduced the weight of the leaf, but other than that I didn't really need to alter any of the simulation parameters. I did turn up the friction of the water object to stop it sliding when it landed. The wind modifier had to be set to a very high value to push the leaf away from the tree and into the water and then I did keyframe the strength of the wind to stop as soon as the leaf reached the water, otherwise the leaf would just go sliding across the river. To create the ripples, I did look at a fluid simulation, but in the end I decided to stick with manually animating an ocean modifier. I had to make the waves much smaller to make them look like gentle ripples. If you're trying to recreate the look, these are the settings I used, although the process of getting them to look right is mostly trial and error. I did end up adding a lifespan to the modifier to make the ripples disappear after a few seconds. The collisions between the water and leaf didn't look very good when I first set up the simulation, however a displaced modifier on the water plane closed the gap and made it look like parts of the leaf were submerged under the water. In order to make the camera animation more realistic, I built a virtual rig that would move the camera as if it was on a, a crane or a jib. By setting the origin of the crane to one end of the rectangle and parenting the camera to the other end, whenever I moved the crane arm, the camera would be moved with it. I created an empty and animated it to follow the falling leaf, and then I parented a UV sphere to the empty. Using a track 2 constraint, I made the camera point at the sphere, which produced more realistic movements than manually animating the camera would have done adding subtle noise modifiers to the UV sphere's X and Z axis, and a touch of camera shake which I think really added to the realism. I parented another empty to the original leaf following empty and set that as the depth of field object in the camera. And with a few keyframes I was able to create the focus pull at the beginning of the shot and I was also able to keep the leaf in focus for the rest of the animation. I set the camera aperture blades to 9 and set the f-stop to f5.6, which I found balanced out legible background detail with some very nice bokeh. <laughs> I could have rendered the animation on my iMac, after all it's only a 15-20 second animation. However, at one hour per frame, this would have taken 15-20 to 20 days, and my computer would have been practically unusable for that time. So I used our new render farm service, Graded Blue Render Farm. Graded Blue Render Farm is a simple and easy to use cloud render farm with free and paid options. We dispensed with the traditional but confusing gigahertz per hour pricing, instead opting for a system that we call Render Hours. A Render Hour is equivalent to one hour of rendering on a GTX 1080. By benchmarking all of the hardware on Greater Blue Render Farm, we are able to standardize prices across a wide variety of hardware. Greater Blue Render Farm is also extremely flexible. You can buy Render Farm hours and you can also earn them by downloading our rendering client and rendering other people's projects when you're not using your computer. If you have a few spare computers lying around, simply install our rendering client on them and create your own Render Farm. Our servers will do all of the hard work, sending projects and different versions of Blender to your computers and uploading the finished frames back to our servers. Greater Blue Render Farm can be used to create and manage your own Render Farm. For more details on Render Hours, the rendering client and other Greater Blue Render Farm features, take a look at the website which is linked in this video's description. Shameless self-promotion over, 
After bundling all the textures into the blend file and zipping the blend, I uploaded the project to the render file. The start frame and end frame are all automatically detected, so after pressing save and start, I can just sit back and wait for the render to complete. And then to finish off the project, once the render had finished, I downloaded all of the rendered frames, I stuck them in DaVinci Resolve and added a touch of noise reduction, I also did a quick color grade, and then finally I added Film Convert to give the animation some really cinematic looking colors.